And feel free to ask questions. I'm going to throw it to you and you can help me out because I have no cards. See, there's not a single question prepared. We're just. We're winging it. Yeah, because she's like, I don't need to know the questions ahead of time. So, <laughs> so that's the way this rolls here. And let me introduce, like I have to, this is Athena Finger. Hello, Athena. Hello. How are you, Patrick? Well, I'm doing well. Thank doing you. Good, thank you. Good. I have to play nice to her because she's right next to us on a table. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who don't know, can't imagine there's somebody here that doesn't. Athena had a very famous grandfather who actually wasn't famous for a period of time, really, right? For a long period of time. Decades, really, right? I mean, yes. some real insiders knew who your grandfather was. Yes. And real hardcore nerds knew who your grandfather was. Yes. And starting in the 60s, there started to be talking about this grandfather, maybe at some convention type things. And there was even, a, in one of the comic books, uh, was a mention that your grandfather created the Riddler back in like 1960s it was done. Okay. And I learned something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then all of a sudden Bill Finger's name is known today as co-creator of Batman. Yes. That's got to be cool. It's awesome. It's uh, long overdue and um, it's been absolutely wonderful to see his name attached to everything. Now for those, I, round of applause, who's seen the Hulu documentary that she's in. Okay, we got okay, we got a room here. Majority has. If you haven't seen it, please check out the documentary. And we're going to uh, offer a 30-day free trial if you don't want to pay for it, so you can sign up and get it for 30 days and watch the documentary. And truly, there are things there you will learn. I have a really hardcore friend who's a Batman fan and he was stunned to learn things about your grandfather. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, he it, seriously, he was just he was like floored to find out that Bob Kane, he didn't do a lot of the things that people or the myth ha right. has it to be that he did. Um, and that's what we're going to get to here in just a second. I'm kind of curious though, back with the documentary, they had a segment where you were animated. They had a little cartoon part of you. Yes. As a little girl, w with the story where you wrote about your grandfather and like the class did not believe you. No, um, you know, back in the 80s, we didn't have the internet like we have now where you can Google information. Um, the, you know, I wasn't really into the comic book world, so I didn't go to conventions and things like that. So um, my school, my classmates, they, they didn't really believe what I was saying. They, really? they really questioned, you know, if your grandfather created this character, why don't you live in a mansion and have, you know, a million dollars? And it's unfortunate he wasn't recognized or given credit. So, mm -hmm. um, but he, that doesn't, you know, say that he didn't do this wonderful thing by creating everything that we love about Batman. <laughs> did, did you yourself, after that incident, did you just kind of forget about the grandfather? Was it much discussion with any family members or did it just fade away? <laughs> Kind of, we didn't really talk about it. It wasn't like every day we talk about Bill. <laughs> um, you know, my parents also split when I was very young. Right. So um, when my father was around, he would talk about it a little bit. Um, he would bring me, you know, sometimes he would bring me compilation books and things oh, really? like that. Um, but it was, it wasn't until the um, Tim Burton movie in '89 was getting really a lot of press and promoted and that it started to strike a nerve with my dad and I could tell um, that he really, you know, felt that his father was not getting, you know, the credit that he was due and that nobody really wanted to take it seriously and give him some kind of byline or even a mention or anything like that. So it was really tough watching my dad go through that at that time and I was still pretty young. I was only 12, 13 at the time when that movie came out. So. You know, it was it was really sad. He he, you know, I remember sitting there and watching the Bob Kane interview on 60 Minutes oh. with him, and it was just like this is so insulting that this man is really disregarding his friend who really helped him create this and became such a worldwide phenomenon, <laughs> really. And um, you know, it was it was a tough struggle for him, and it it kind of carried over into my life, like. Like you mentioned, in schools, you know, people didn't believe me. Um, in high school, it got a little better. There were, I had a few more friends that were comic 
nerds and knew a little more. Even if they didn't know about Bill, they were like, wow, that's really interesting. And they sought out more information about it. So I, I was very um, selective about who I talked to about mm. Bill and his wonderful creation and what he did. So. It's not until more recently that I've been more open about it. Okay. And, um, when Mark Nobleman found me, he, he's like, you need to get out there. You need to talk about it. You need to bring more awareness. You need to be Bill's you know, biggest you know, cheerleader and get out there and talk about it. So it's more recent in the last decade that I've been more vocal and willing to participate and things like that. Was there any lashback from Kane supporters or Kane? I, I, I know his wife was a big supporter for a period of time or keeping the myth alive, but was there anybody trying to keep it the Kane as um, the No, they, the Kane family has been extremely quiet. They did not participate in any of the 75th anniversary stuff, which I thought was really weird. Um, I did meet Elizabeth Kane um, at the Dark Knight premiere back in 2008. Um, she wasn't thrilled that the family was there. Um, but I mean, she didn't make a scene or anything like that. She's, you know, she's just an older woman. And, okay. you know, it, and I can understand where they're coming from. I mean, they're for 75 years, their grandfather or their father saying, you know, this is what I did. And, mm. you know, you tend to believe what your family is telling you. So when someone comes and says, well, the truth, is really not that it's really this you know they're not gonna you know say okay whatever you say they're gonna you know stick to what they've been told their whole lives so as far as them publicly saying anything they haven't they've been super quiet okay quiet's good i can't tell <laughs> them why or what their reasoning is but they've been super, very quiet okay quiet quiet is a good thing um, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what is there? What we've seen those of us who have seen the documentary. We know there's you know stuff that ends up on the floor mm -hmm. that didn't make it. Is there a, like a scene or something that didn't make it that you know of that they maybe left out that you talked about or something you discovered maybe right after it was shot? You know that. Um, not really. I think that they left out a little bit more about the stuff that my sister did legally and mm. what we had to go through legally. Um, I, I don't think that too much ended up on the, the floor. Um, so I think just a little more, because I think people are really interested in like how we were able to do this. Because you, know, you always hear it's such a long struggle and you know in and out of court and this, that, and the other thing. Um, it, in no way was it easy what we did, mm. but it was a lot smoother than what most people have to go through when they're in this kind of a circumstances when people are not getting credit for what they created, what they produced, whatever. Because um, it happens all the time, unfortunately, mm. not just in the comic book business. But, and so um, I think that a little more about that would have been a little more intriguing for people, but I understand the, the flow of the movie and what they were going for. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't do another one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how, how late did your grandfather actually write? I know he, you know, people, it's Batman, they think, the, of Bill Finger that know, but he did other work too, the Green Lantern, he, he co-created it as well. Yes. And he wrote stories for the Lantern and others. Right, Superman. Uh, he also created another character called Wildcat with Erwin Han um, Hansen. Um, he worked for Marvel for a little while. He actually worked with Jack Kirby for a little while. Um, he wrote for television. He wrote for radio. He wrote a couple screenplays. He, I mean, he really, since he was a starving artist, he got work wherever he could possibly find it. So he was one of the few people that were from that generation that made the jump from comics to TV to radio to writing mm -hmm. movies to really just trying to get as much out of his writing that he could. Has any of that survived the original work? Do you have anything, uh, or as a collector found or has it, that you've seen uh, an original script or, or something of his? Um, Back in 2008, when I went to meet Paul Lovitz for the first time, okay. um, he gave me a tour at the DC Comics office when they were still in New York. Um, he was so wonderful to me. He took me out to lunch. Right before we went to lunch, he's like, Athena, I have a present for you. And I'm like, 
what could you possibly have for me? And he's like, so, you know, your grandfather submitted the script the weekend that he died, and it's one of the only things that survived, and you should have it. So he wow. gave me the last script that my father, grandfather Fantastic. submitted the Friday before he died. No. <laughs> that, is, that is really cool. Like, wow. Because they didn't save any of that stuff. My father went through his father's stuff when he passed away and he had collected a lot of items like his gimmick book and other mm. things and he went to the DC office he's like you should have these things these are you know of value and they saw no value in it and ended up in the dumpster and it's gone forever so so was Batman in the household of the Athena Finger childhood? Was there any much Batman or, you know, TV? I mean, I watched the cartoons and I watched okay. the reruns of the 60s show and the movies and things like that. But it wasn't, we're a foodie family. Okay. <laughs> so that's what our lives kind of revolved around. It was like food. And my mom was a clothing designer, so they were really busy with that whole thing. So comics wasn't something that I grew up with. What I did grow up with, though, is horror. My dad would take me to mm. see every single horror movie that he could possibly take me to. So that's really what I grew up with was, was film. Okay, but now has it changed for you a little bit? I well, think yeah, just a I, little? I, I've read more comics. I mean, I, I try to keep more in the current of what's going on. It's, um, but there's just so much now. I mean, mm. <laughs> it's really hard to catch up after 75 years. So. What, well, that's in, what is your favorite version of your grandfather's co-creation that's out there? A either the TV show, the 60s, or you know the Tim Burton Batman, or the current. Uh, is there something out there? A video game? Do you, are you a gamer? Do you, no, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I, it's possible. I did, you know, um, Arkham no. Asylum possibly My here? My son hates playing video games with me because I'm so bad at them. <laughs> okay. So I just stopped. I'm like, I'm just going to stop. I, I can't. <laughs> so um, my favorite, okay, well, obviously when Tim Burton came out with the first Batman movie and then Batman Returns, those, those were like blew me away, especially Returns because mm. I love Catwoman. She's one of my favorite characters. Um, so I, was, I really enjoyed those, but the thing that really impressed me was the animated series. Okay. Um, in the 90s. Um, I watched it religiously, the, the way that they animated it, the coloring, the writing, um, Kevin Conroy's voice. I mean, it's just, they, they had it so 100% correct with that animated series. So um, that's really what I, I drew to. At that time in my life, too, I was also doing cartooning, and I was okay. really big into creating my own art. I've always been creating art, but like during that time, I was in art school, and I really enjoyed seeing what they were doing with the characters. So, so art school, you have an art background, mm -hmm. and now you have Batman art that you're doing. Yes. And so how did this come about? I mean, are you, did you discover like a, one of your grandfather's covers, you know, one of the stories you wrote and you said, hey, I, that might make a, a great painting? I mean, how, how did this come to be? And how long does it take to do a Batman painting out of curiosity? <laughs> well, it really depends on the piece that I'm working on. Um, I've always done something creative throughout my life. I, mean, I didn't really get back into painting until recently. Um, a friend of mine, Chris King, okay. um, he, he is a wonderful artist and he had shown me what I could produce mm. and say, listen, why don't you try doing some of this stuff since it is such a connection to your family. And I never really thought about doing cover art of other people's art because, you know, okay. when you're in art school, it's you've got to do your own vision. Da, 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 da. But going to the cons that I have, I see what artists are putting out there and they're putting out their interpretations of these characters or they're recreating stuff that's already mm. been put out there. So um, once he kind of like gave me that direction, I kind of you know, was like, oh, okay, well, it's, this is something that I should tap into along with doing my original pieces. So um, as far as how long it takes, it, like I said, it depends on the piece. How, so, how about Batmite? Have you seen the Batmite that's here? Yeah. Bat okay. Mite. Well, the Batmite that's here is actually the second one I've done. Um, those two pieces, I got them both done in less than five days. Wow. Um, the first one, I think, took me maybe four, three and a half, four days. 
The one that's here that's available took me two days to do. Okay. So um, those are pretty easy though. I mean, it's not, it's like an oversized coloring book. So, you, you know, it's not like I have to put super fine detail and shadowing and things like that. Um, the five foot piece that I have with the Catwoman fighting with Robin and Batman, um, that one took me a little longer. Okay. The size of it, um, it was also the first cover piece that I had done, so I was kind of struggling with it a little bit on technique and how to approach it. Um, so it, it took me, I don't know, I want to say maybe a couple weeks to do that one. Mm. Um, but the first one that I really did, I, I did as a, a gift to Michael Uslan. Um, it's the Michael Keaton Batman, it's just a portrait of him. That one took me a couple of weeks, but I was also under a time pressure because I wanted to bring it to LA for the Lego Batman premiere. Okay. That he ended up not being at. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was so heartbroken. I'm like, I traveled across the country with this thing. And you're not even here. But that's okay, because we actually were able to meet up in Florida and I was able to present him with the painting. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I'm going to do more and mix in some of, like I said, some of my own original stuff. Okay. So, you know, it's, it, it really depends on the piece. I've been struggling with a couple different ones that I have at home. Um, I'm working on an Adam West piece right now. Oh. Really having a hard time with it to sit down and really, because I want to get it right. So I'm, I'm struggling with the approach, but it, it, little by little. You know, that one's going to take me a little longer because it, it, it's not that might, which is just coloring book. You know, it's 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 an original. So it, it's going to take some more loving. OK. And you can see her work. There's some in the wall behind us here at the panel room. Yeah. Oh, you moved it, you moved it all over. OK. This at her table. Please stop by after the panel here and check that out. And you post things, too, on your Facebook page. Uh, I do. Art I pieces. post things. I, I have a Facebook page. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm setting up a website now so that people can see the variety of work that I do. I don't just paint. I'm also a photographer. I did jewelry making for a little while. Um, I, as a child, I did cartooning. So I've done a little bit of everything. She's crafty. <laughs> yeah, she is crafty. Okay. So um, I'm going to throw it to the audience here okay. and see if we have some questions. Uh, I'm going to just, you, go ahead. Seeing a Joker behind me, I also think of Jerry Robinson. What was the relationship with Jerry Robinson with you before he passed away? And what's it like with now certain creators coming up to you? And especially during the San Diego Comic Con with the Bill Finger Award. Um, I was able to meet Jerry back in, I want to say 2007, I think. He came to Miami, the, um, there is a comic, Jewish comic museum that travels. Um, and so he invited me to come and meet him. I had talked to him on the phone prior to that. Um, and he was very welcoming and like very honored to meet me as I was very honored and in awe of meeting him. Because um, I had never met anyone that knew my grandfather or talked to mm. my grandfather before that. So um, I did get to see him a couple times. The last time I saw him was at the Dark Knight premiere. Um, him and his wife attended, so it was really nice to see them. Uh, I did not really get to see him much more after that, and then he passed away. And I was like, oh, I lost all my opportunities to have more conversations with him. But I'm... I'm very honored that I was able to actually meet him in person. So, and as far as the creators, and I mean, a few have come to me. It's it, it's kind of I don't know. It's it's odd. Some people are very welcoming, and some people are just in their own little bubble. So, uh, it just really depends on the personality of the person. But the, everyone that I have come across has been extremely welcoming and generous and. Um, wanting to tell me their story, whether it's their connection to Bill or just Batman in general. Um, the fans have like been pouring out their love to me for the last while now. Like the last four years has been amazing with people reaching out to me and um, just expressing their love for the character. So it's um, kind of um, overwhelming at times. <laughs> Excellent question. You have another? Yeah. 
Okay. Anybody? There we go. Um, metaphorically speaking, as of course we wouldn't know what your grandfather would think, but through you, um, would you think that your grandfather would have been happy that thanks to Miller and Burton that Batman came back into the darker gothic that it was originally compared to the Adam West, Wham, Pow, Bam that was in the 60s, 70s? Originally, the Batman started as a dark gothic right. crime. And I know there was a little bit during that during the time of the Burton thing, there was a little bit of a, you know, I'm not going to name any names, trying to stop the film because it lost that wham, pow, bam right. thing. Do you think he would have been happy that it finally came back to its roots? Um, I think he would have been extremely pleased with the fact that it went back to its roots and to what his vision of the character was. Exactly. Um, he wrote for the 60s series, he wrote um, the Clock King episode, yes. so he was part of that genre of that pop culture Batman with the pow zip, bat, you know, um, which I, I, I can't say how he felt about it, but at least yeah, he, was, he was able to participate in that genre of his character. Um, I know that him and Charles really um, put a lot of work into that script, and um, Charles was gracious enough to let Bill have first billing on that, and so I think that really um, gave him some of the validity of what he had done for the character for so long, even though it was just a small one part of the whole big picture. I mean, it, it, it brought a new generation into mm -hmm. Batman, like you know, like I'm telling you, I was I was eight nine years old, and I, I would walk into Cracker Barrel and this is Batman fever everywhere for the 1989 <laughs> movie, and I got I got the issue where you call and kill Jason Todd. I called 31 times, <laughs> an $18.50 phone bill. Ooh, that's a lot for back then. It was the worst beating of my life. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but I can, I, I, to the, now this day, I can be proud I helped kill Jason Todd. Because he came back as Red Hood, which is an amazing character now, the way he's being written and everything. So. But I, I, you know, I, 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 growing up in the, in the 90s, I, talking to comic, you know, I found out about your, your grandfather and everything. And one comic shop owner used the slogan, I, I give. Bob Kane, the middle finger. <laughs> uh, that was his slogan. He, oh, that's he, funny. He's like, I will never, I will never get anything signed by Kane. I will not, you know, I will not sell anything. Unfortunately, he has a really bad reputation. I mean, and I, I'm not here to, to exactly. say that Bob Kane was a bad person or anything because if he didn't initially go to my grandfather and say, hey, can you help me with this project, then there wouldn't be Batman because he. My grandfather didn't come up with the initial idea. That truly was Bob Kane who initially came up with the idea. He turned it to a business thing, and then when there was a point of no return, he just like... Right. What he did with the character and how he presented himself, that's a completely different story. But without that initial concept, we wouldn't have what we have today. So you have to give Bob credit for that. I yeah, mean, you really yeah. do. I mean, I mean he and he was a businessman, and he fully took advantage of the business side of that. And unfortunately, he took credit away from people that deserved the credit. Your your grandfather actually worked with Bob before Batman, didn't he? Just a little bit. He little wrote bit, wrote yes. for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a work for hire yeah. or a writer for another small strip that. Bob Kane was producing at the time before he came and and pitched the the Batman idea to him. Right. So um, he was he was sensitive to the fact that my grandfather really wanted to be a writer. Um, they had met at a party, and um, my grandfather was selling shoes at the time and not really happy with the way his life was going, and and voiced that he really wanted to be a writer. So you know, luckily Bob Kane was willing to give him that opportunity. So. Yeah, and a different time period to the, the when it was created. Yeah. I mean, it was came it came right on the heels of Superman, and you know, uh, and what I read about Bob was, you know, he was given this opportunity if he could come up with a character in a very short period of time, and things just started rolling, right. you know, with it, out of and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
but he did write, and not slam the Bob Kane family, he did write a biography. I don't know who's read it in here. It is, you've read the biography. Yeah. He, <laughs> okay. I'm not saying. Yeah, I haven't read it either. Okay. But we do have one person here who can. Yeah. It's there if you want to read it. It's available. Um, um, a lot of the Bill Finger parts that were added to that um, biography was thanks to Tom Andrea, who mm -hmm. is the co writer. Um, he really fought with Bob about you have to tell the truth. Like, you're not telling the truth here. You didn't do all of this mm -hmm. yourself. There were people who were there who helped you create this empire. You have to tell the truth. So Tom Andrea is a huge, huge um, you know, advocate, and he really wanted to make sure that Bill got some recognition from Bob's story. So. You can thank Tom Andrea for that. <laughs> do, you, do you think there's a story Athena can write, um, either in, you know, to go along with the documentary or beyond what the documentary did? Is there material there that you, as a creator, a creative type, can um, can give us down the road? Uh, I've had friends tell me since the age of 16 that I needed to write a book, so I guess at some point it's going to have to happen. I'm going to have to have someone write it for me though, because I'm not friendly with words. Because <laughs> I'd love to see it as a screenplay, if somebody could, you know, do the story, or, you know, even combine the early creators, have the Siegel, Schuster, Kane, and Finger story, you know, because there was a, if you read the book called Superboys about the biography of the Schuster and Siegel, Jerry and Joe weren't fans of Kane, and they had their reasons, which I'll leave it for you to read in the book, uh, <laughs> a, a why. So I think there's a lot of history there. Did Bob Kane have any fans? I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you, there you go. Yeah. Uh, my question again is: Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster obviously had a very emotional moment when they saw their credit for the first time on the Superman movie. Yes. So I guess what was your, I guess somewhat reaction, but your reaction and your son's reaction to see Bill's name on there as well. Um. Well, I mean, we were extremely excited. Um, it was a little odd. I've gone to a few premieres since before the Batman versus Superman, and you know, people's names come up in the beginning with this, you know, company and that, and everybody's hooting and hollering. For this movie, it was so quiet for everything. Like you could, and it was like just me and my son and my sister. Yay! And like everyone else was quiet. We're like, okay, we'll be quiet now. <laughs> um, so it was a little odd, but it was extremely exciting and emotional and um, like kind of like job good, good job, <laughs> you know, like finally. Because um, I mean, he had been featured on the show um, on uh, Robot Chicken before yeah. that, and like Gotham had finally released it, and so. It started showing up a little bit before the movie, so it was it, it was a good lead up to that. And then seeing his name on the big screen, it was just like yes. <laughs> now that it's finally got done, right? Do you have you talked to um, Nobleman and Temple Smith to maybe updating um, Bill the Boy Wonder because it ended before he got the credit? Um, I don't. I think Mark is going to revise the book. Um, I know that when he tours, he goes to schools around the world talking about um, investigative reporting and research and talking about the Bill Finger story and the, and the Superman boys. Um, so when he does talk about the book now, and he said, well, I used to end this with he do still doesn't have credit, but guess what? And then he changes the end of his speech that he does and says, well, now he has credit and all this great stuff. So I think he's more changed that part of it and not so much the actual book. Um, as far as doing a follow-up, I don't think he has anything planned for it. Um, I have a few things in the works uh, aside uh, that are separate from Mark. Um, 
author in the final stages, hopefully. I actually need to talk to that author and find out what's going on. Um, it's going to be in a graphic novel style, okay. um, and it's going to talk about the three generations, Bill, my father, Fred, and myself. So um, I'm really excited to see that one come out. So I, I, we're trying. My sister and I are trying to find um, people to help us with a screenplay and, and doing a, a fictional movie based on Bill's story. Mm. So we have a lot of different things that we're we're kicking around right now. Oh, so there's going to be more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. Great, <laughs> oh, yeah. great. It's not the end. <laughs> Don't worry. You have a question? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's kind of a silly one, but you should ask me anyway. Um, uh, I've been hearing a lot of Jerry and Schuster. Um, have you heard any, uh, like, uh, connections, means with uh, the Sh Jerry and Schuster, like, family? Because uh, my I think I kind of see a parallel between the Siegel and Schuster family. The Siegel and Schuster family. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. That's okay. And Schuster family and what kind of what happened with Bill Finger. Um, I have not met anybody from the, either one of the families. Um, a, a lot of the people that I have met have been through the Batman family. Um, like I got to meet Jerry and his son also. I've done panels with. Um, I got to hang out with Irwin a couple times, um, which was very interesting. Um, he had a very interesting story about my grandmother that I won't share here. Oh, no. He made sure to tell me. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can you tell people at the table? Sure. Okay, come, come, come by the table and she'll tell you. Kind of bouncing off that, have you met any actors who work, actors or directors who worked on Batman material? You know, um, Kevin Conroy, I've Owen. met so many people who have been attached to the Batman franchise. I did get to meet Kevin Conroy, Kevin Smith, um, Gary Oldman. I've met um, Christopher Nolan himself. I, I've, uh, oh my God, I can't even think of all the people. Did you see Adam West? Did you see Adam West? You got them too. I did. I got to meet Adam <laughs> West, which was so amazing. Okay, so. My first con that I went to was for um, the franchise of Wizard World. And so my friend brought me to St. Louis to, to like unveil me basically to the comic world. <laughs> and he, he asked me, he goes, Athena, who do you want to meet? What celebrities do you want to meet? And I'm like, well, I have to meet Adam West, of course. He goes, that's a, that's a no-brainer, that will happen. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So when we were in St. Louis, he made sure that Adam, oh. myself, and my son were introduced. And Adam was so wonderful. He's like, so, how's your grandfather doing? Is it, you know, and I'm like, he's been dead for a long time. I'm sorry, but he's, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> but he was so gracious, and he was very, like, it's such an honor to meet you. And I'm like, but it's an honor to meet you. It's like, it's weird. I'm not used to this whole royalty comic book being a celebrity thing. So I'm like, thank you. Um, some of the other people that I really wanted to meet, um, Kevin Smith was one that I chased down for like a couple years. <laughs> you were a stalker? Is that, is that, is that, uh -huh. Well, okay, so I was supposed to meet him at this event in, um, in New York in 2014, but with his time, he couldn't take the moment to, because he had to leave, and he got that, to the event late. So um, we were kind of introduced a little bit, like I stood up and waved, and he like waved at me too, and I was like, oh, cool. Um, <laughs> but like I kept meeting all these people that are part of his inner circle. Um, I got to hang out with Ming for a little while at one of these cons, and like, um, Jay was at the table next to me in San Diego, and then I saw Jay again in, in Florida at Supercon, and like, so I'm, and also this other woman, Jamie, who does the Wayne Foundation with him. I'm like, I'm like, he's like the ultimate Bat fan. Like, why am I not like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, what's the story? Like, why hasn't he asked me to be on the show? Why hasn't he like even tried to like? try to meet me, like anything. So I finally, <laughs> he probably thinks I'm crazy, but uh, I finally met him face to face at the uh, Suicide Squad. Oh. <laughs> it was late in the after party and I'm walking around the room with my sister and out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh my God, it's Kevin Smith. And I like <laughs> ran over to him, I'm like, it's you. And he's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 
and he still hasn't had me on the show. <laughs> well, she doesn't get excited. No. <laughs> it was really funny, though. <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, I need to actually get in touch with them. I'm going to California for uh, San Diego Comic Con, so I'm hoping that we can connect while I'm there. Well, you're actually presenting the Bill Finger Award, aren't yeah, you? Correct? I'm presenting the Bill Finger Award again. All right. It will be my second time. I've actually um, I've told the people who handle the Bill Finger Award that I'd like to actually be more involved and hands-on, and I'm hoping that I can start going every year and help oh. present, because I think that's really important that someone's there representing Bill. Fantastic. Now, when this show, when it's done, you know, we're all going to go home and, you know, do our lives, but you're going to go back onto the circuit, right? You're going to go to another convention have, in the near uh, future, right? I'm going to San Diego this week. Um, to go participate. I'm not, I'm presenting the Bill Finger Award, but I'm not part of the, the con. I don't have a table or anything, so I'm just going to be a spectator this time. When I went back in 2014, um, I was a featured guest for the big celebration for the 75th anniversary, so I didn't really get to see much of the con, even though, like, even four mm. days is not enough to see <laughs> the con because it's so big. Um, so th I hope this time I can actually get to explore and, and talk to more people and, and see more of the fans. And I know coming up September, you're at Space Coast at Space Coast Comic Con. Yes. And that's in Coco. And is there anywhere else uh, we can see you maybe in the near future? Um, I'm still waiting to hear back about New York Comic Con. I usually go to that one every year um, for the last several years. Um, doing a panel or just going to see my friends, basically. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do Mount Dora because it's the same weekend okay. as New York Comic Con. Um, I am going to Supercon in two weeks in Fort Lauderdale. I'm not a guest or anything, but I'll be there. I'll be crawling around. I always am. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get more stuff booked. Um, now that I've got um, actual artwork that I can put on a table now <laughs> that's the whole thing is like you, you do these cons and they give you a table but I don't have a book I don't have a movie I don't have like, yet all this stuff so but now I'm starting to like make my own little niche in the market so I'm hoping to get more into the circuit and get out there and keep talking Bill and promote his wonderful visions okay Anybody have a, a, another question before we wrap it up here? Is there any other questions? Anybody? Yeah. Yep. Um, physical copies, do you know if he's ever going to do any for the, the documentary, like DVD, Blu-ray? Um, for the Hulu documentary, I did ask them about that. They um, said that they most likely will not be because it is streaming online. They might change their mind. I don't know. It's probably not set in stone, but it would be nice to have a physical exactly. copy of it. Question. So. I'm sure someone's going to bootleg it at some point. We won't say that on uh, film. Uh, she did. No, I did. I'll add, I'll add it. No. Don't have those yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, got, I got Freddy Krueger MTV special. Oh, there you go. <laughs> any, any other questions for Athena? Okay, I encourage you to please go to Athena's table, check out what she has to offer there and talk to her. Also pick up one of our cards, we'll have this available online later tonight and tomorrow for sure. And we're, we, I have to really say thank you for coming here. Uh, oh. She's not from you know, Altamont Springs or Orlando, it, you know, she's from somewhere else and uh, she actually took time to come here and spend time with us today. We deeply appreciate that. I'm always here for the fans. I, I love coming out and seeing them and talking to them. And just participating. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.